everyone welcome back to child of the kingdom thank you guys for coming back to my youtube page Woo! -hoo. so today we're going to be talking about are you a bitter bee we all know what bitter bees are we don't swear on this channel so i'm not going to fill in the blank to what bee is however i'm sure you're familiar <laughs> um yeah so we're going to talk about are you a bitter bee if you don't know what a bitter bee is basically it's somebody who just isn't happy for other people's success you're not happy for you know other people's uprising and you just don't know how to compliment people without it being ingenuine and without it upsetting you. Bitter people usually also have a hard time with um, comparison. A lot of the time it's she has this and I don't, he has this and I don't, he's like this and I'm not, etc, etc. So we're going to talk about what it means to be bitter, where this bitterness comes from, if you are bitter or not, and how we rid ourselves of this bitterness. Lego. So as I kind of started off by saying, bitterness kind of comes from this insecurity, this anger, this resentfulness, and it's not coming from a place of love. And you know, as Christians, our entire principle is based off of love. Jesus is love, and we are Christ followers. We are Jesus followers. We embrace and completely believe in Jesus as our Savior. So if Jesus is love, our principle is love. So let's talk about this. If you're resentful and you're angry all the time, where is it coming from? Where is that anger coming from? I kind of, you know, had to think about it in my own life. When I see someone get something and I'm not happy for them, genuinely just not happy for them, it's usually because of two things. One, I'm frustrated that I'm not the one receiving whatever they're receiving. Or two, I just don't like the person. <laughs> so that's for me. Everybody's different, but you know, we have to be transparent on this channel and that is where my bitterness comes from in my own life. So now let's think about this. I don't like somebody, but Christianity's principle is based off of love. So if I don't like someone, why am I projecting hate to them when my main duty, my main assignment is to love? That's one. And two, <laughs> Um, if I'm looking at someone and upset because they had some, they have something or they have uh, received something that I don't have, and I'm like, I'm gonna be rude, I'm gonna be salty because I don't have that. Like that is showing basically a spirit of inadequacy in my life, right? And I'm basically through that action, I'm telling God, you know what, God, I don't think that you're gonna give that to me. So instead of focusing on my own life and trying to get mine, I'm gonna just hate on her because she got it and I didn't. She's always gonna have it, and I'm always not gonna have it. It's the spirit of inadequacy, spirit of not having, a spirit of lack, and that kind of correlates in with faith. Now, do you have the faith to believe that God is going to give you all of those things or bless you with these things or give you these opportunities and open these doors for you? Do you have that faith or do you feel, again, you look at that and say, that's never going to be me, so I'm going to be angry about it. God knows that we are insecure, okay? God knows that we sometimes don't trust. The way that I know this is through the Word of God, through the Bible. When we read the Bible, it's not it's not just peachy. And I, I say this literally in every video. The Bible, the Word of God, isn't just perfection. It's literally showing humans having issues with trusting God, with having faith in God, with being certain of God's Word, and God proving Himself truth, truthful, trustworthy, and consistent. Covenant never broken in every situation every situation okay so the word of god knows that we sometimes don't feel completely comfortable in our situation we don't feel like things are always going to work out we don't think that things are always going to be for our benefit we don't think our future is always going to be full of things that are prosperous sometimes we think we're in harm's way etc etc these are insecurities these are things that you're just not sure about there's no security there it's insecure unsecure right so let's let's think about this how do we get rid of our insecurity so that we can get rid of our bitterness once we are no longer insecure when i see someone else who's successful i'm not like oh why does she have that and i don't or why does he have that and i don't because i'm not worried that i'm not going to receive what is mine but when i'm insecure i'm now really insecure and i'm looking at people and saying oh she has that i'm never going to get that oh my gosh i'm so frustrated oh my gosh i hate her that kind of thing so the root of the issue isn't that you're bitter it's that this bitterness is coming from this insecurity so let's remedy this insecurity how do we get over this insecurity the first thing is that you need to be able to go to God transparently keyword transparent what does transparent mean see through openly honestly transparently okay now this is awkward I'm not gonna lie this is kind of awkward because God is your creator 
and we also know that he's really powerful so when you're praying or when you're talking to god and having your alone time i know sometimes there's this like fear that you don't want to say the wrong thing because you don't want him to be upset with you this is the thing god is literally better than a therapist better than uh, confiding in your mom or your sister better than confiding in anyone in this world better than writing in a diary he is the space he is the the entity he is the one that you can be your most authentic self with he is the only one that you can that permits you that wants you to be completely transparent okay that transparency is only going to help you so it's not something that you need to be afraid of again your transparency is going to help you this morning literally this is what ignited me to make this video this morning i was just i woke up you know, doing my do, and I got a phone call. So I'm on the phone, and somebody said something that really pissed me off, okay? Somebody said something that made me feel very insecure while it's on the phone. So I was thinking in my mind, literally I was thinking in my mind, like, I'm going to snap in three, two, one. <laughs> literally, I was livid, okay? But then I thought to myself before, you know, the three, two, one countdown, I was like, no. The, the enemy wants me to be helpless, okay? The enemy wants you to feel like the battle is yours because when it's yours, you're helpless. I hope that makes sense. I can't fight any of my battles in this life. I can't fight anything. I'm not capable. As me, Princess Wusu, as a human, I'm not capable of fighting any battle. I need God on my side, right? I need him to lead and I need him to take precedence over everything I do for me to be successful. But you see, when I was on that phone, in that moment, I felt like it was up to me. Okay, that person said something and it was kind of a comparison thing, kind of like a, I got it, you don't type of thing. And in that moment, I was like, it, it's up to me right now. This is, this, is my, this is my battle to fight. So I was ready to get upset, defend myself, you know, get a little, little attitude-ish or whatever. And I was ready to do that. And then I thought to myself, I'm like, this is the enemy. The enemy wants me to feel like the battle is mine, therefore I'm helpless because I'm not capable. The enemy wants you to feel like you can't. The enemy wants you to feel wants you to feel like you won't. Okay? That's where the insecurity comes from. So when I'm feeling like this, I could pick up the phone and cuss that person out, hang up the phone and feel good for, you know, a couple five minutes, you know, max. And then I'll start to feel insecure all over again. All over again. So what I did was I, was I I hung up the phone, I came to my room, and I started to pray. And I started to pray, 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 and I was mad, okay? I was mad when I was praying. Have you guys ever had that moment when you pray, when you just close the door in your room and you're just upset, or you're just super emotional, and you just close the door and you're like, nobody, no human can talk to me right now. This is between me and God right now. And you just let it out. Either you cry or you yell or you're whatever, you're just upset. That's how I was. I was huge, like... I was going to say humiliated, but that's not the word. I was just angered, okay? And then I kind of thought to myself, I'm like, after I tell God how I feel in this moment, right, with, with complete honesty, he is going to speak to me in the way that remedies my issues. When my angerness is gone, and when he speaks to me and speaks into that, that, that insecurity, right, the insecurity vanishes. I'm no longer insecure because God's word takes precedence over everyone else's, right? God's word takes precedence over anyone else's thoughts, anything. God's word comes way before that. So when I'm telling God I am mad right now and he's speaking right into that anger, the anger eventually goes away. And I don't feel angry anymore because God has spoken. And when he's spoken, that's it. It's done. I'm not questioning it. I'm not worried about it. I'm like, my creator has spoken and I move on with my life. And that's just out in the garbage. It's gone. I'm not holding on to that anger anymore. But see, imagine if I just cussed the person out on the phone and I cussed them out one time, hung up the phone, and then kept it pushing with my life and never came to God with, with that insecurity. Even as angry as I was, if I just bottled, bottled it all up and never came to him. I wouldn't have that that time for him to just work directly into that insecurity of mine for him to address that anger or for him to address that pain for him to address that heartbreak i wouldn't have experienced that because i'm not giving him that that side of me 
I hope this is making sense. You have to be transparent because when you're transparent, all of those issues become so visible. And when they're visible, that's what you're using, right? When your emotions are visible, when you're visibly angry, everything you do is just going to be angry, right? And so when I'm praying and I'm like, God, I'm so frustrated. I don't know why this is happening to me. He's seeing that angry side of me. And I'm, I'm open and honest about my anger. I'm not angry at him, but I am angry and I'm speaking to him so he knows what it is. And he speaks right into my situation. I, I think that in, in this day and age, sometimes we think that we need to come to God and say, Lord, I exalt you. Lord, I praise your holy name. You are so worthy to be praised. And those are all beautiful, beautiful things to say to the Lord. But at the end of the day, he's my father. You know, he's not... I always say this, he's not the principal and I'm the, t the student who's about to get into detention. He's my father. I should feel okay, I should feel safe to go to him crying, to go to him screaming, to go to him angry, to go to him frustrated, to go to him confused, to go to him even hesitant. I should feel okay to go to him in every state for him to remedy my insecurity. Okay, and that's where the bitter bitterness is coming from because you aren't allowing God to really work with your authentic self. Don't come to God and put bandages over your wounds and say, Lord, I praise you. You are holy. Thank you, Jesus. Woo -woo. Do you want a revolution? Woo -woo. No, you need to come to God and say, Lord, I am a mess right now. I'm angry. He did this to me and he broke my heart. Then he texted that girl and I'm pissed. God, I need to get over this. These are soul ties. Lord, I use your authority. I destroy these soul ties. Lord God, I am so upset right now, but Lord, I know that you're going to make a way God soften my heart Lord take away this anger Lord I come to you I give myself away to you these are the types of things this is raw right that that was so real in that moment that is what that's how you come to God that's how you do it because he has to work with the real you if you're putting bandages all over yourself and just trying to be like oh I'm, I'm happy Lord Lord I'm fine I'm fine I'm fine like how is anything ever gonna be solved how is anything ever gonna be solved so I was thinking about that and when I was angry and after I had hung up the phone and I came into my room and I was praying and praying, I literally felt release. I felt such a release. God just released me from that situation. And now, from now on, if ever I'm put into a situation like that, I will never feel inadequate. I will never feel um, un uncomparable or I will never feel like I'm lesser than or I lack because he has spoken. And when God's spoken, when he speaks, it's done. It's finished. It's done. If you look in the Bible, Joel chapter 2 verse 12. And I'm going to read from the NLT version. Um, he says, that is why the Lord says, turn to me now while there is time. Give me your hearts. Come with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Okay, come with the fasting, the weeping, the mourning. Come emptying yourself. Come crying. Come grieving. Come angry. Come who, how you are and who you are. Come, come, come. That's what God is telling us. There's no reason to impress him. Who, like you're impressing God nothing you can do can impress God he is God he is he is a, I don't even know I can't even speak what he is king is not even enough he is you know alpha and omega he is God I can't impress him I can't put a little contour and make you feel like oh wow look at princess that's not gonna work these things don't work that's not the relationship that you need to have with your lord you need to come with him and you need to say god i'm a mess right now i am livid or lord i am so heartbroken lord i'm so sad lord i'm so disappointed in how things turned out god i need you i need you to lift up my spirits i need you to strengthen me i need you to allow me to be consistent in my walk with you i need you to allow me to be consistent in speaking with you lord god i need in this moment for you to speak to me these are the type of things when you're open with yourself and when you open yourself up to the lord he's just gonna pour in to the exact spots that you need filling he's gonna pour into you in in the perfect way in the most perfect way and he's gonna make you so whole and it's a beautiful process and it, it shouldn't be something that you're afraid of you know don't be afraid be not afraid don't be afraid god isn't going to be angry with you if you say you're upset god isn't going to be um annoyed of you if you come crying come who you are as you are in this moment right now and that's the message for today I hope you guys enjoyed. Be sure to thumbs up, subscribe, leave your comments, and I'll see you in another video. Bye.